Hey, David Rathoff here. Today I'm going to be walking through a new approach to Unity Dialog System. Uh, one of my more popular videos is on a uni Unity Dialog System, but um, it's actually not how I would approach it today. And I'm just going to be walking through uh, what I think is um, the easiest way I know about to set one of these up. So stick with me. Uh, so in the background here, you can see uh, <coughs> we've got chun -Li up here. And she's uh, just saying, where's good Ryu? And I'm going to hit spacebar to just advance advanced through the conversation here. Uh, so here's Evil Ryu, he's saying who cares? And you may have picked up over on the side here that we have um, an inspector window open for this conversation. And it has, um, it's keeping track of a few things here. So it's keeping track of who's the speaker on the left, who's the speaker on the right. And then uh, it's keeping a list of um, the lines and who's saying them. So you can see the first line that we saw here was Chun Li's, uh, where's good Ryu? And then the second one is evil Ryu saying who cares? And then when I hit spacebar again, you're gonna see this third one here for Chun Li saying, I do, I'm gonna find him. So let's just do that. And it'll just keep going right down this list here. And um, at the end, oh, you can see too, we have the ability to do um, multiple lines of a uh, dialogue. <coughs> and then at the end, I'll just hit spacebar and this will go away. And if we wanted to, we could fire it back up again um, and walk back through it. So this is a really common setup you see in a lot of games uh, for uh, doing dialogue between characters. Uh, this is kind of a simplified example that just assumes there's only ever going to be two characters and that the expressions don't change. But all the concepts here will help you out um, when you, you know, build up, you know, however it is you want your dialogue system to work. Um, <coughs> so there's kind of two main pieces to this. There's the... Uh, way that we're keeping track of these characters and the conversation and all the data and then there's how we're actually displaying it. Um, the way that we're storing the characters to me is um, and, and the data for the conversations uh, probably the more interesting part so I'm going to start with that but if you want to see um, the full explanation of how to set up a dialogue system where you can toggle back and forth between characters I'll walk through that as well but I'm going to start off with um, you know, how we're setting up these characters, how we're setting up the conversations, uh, what that looks like. So um, the thing I'm using for this is a scriptable object, um, which was new to me. I'm still um, learning Unity, but um, this is something that uh, isn't a mono behavior and it's a little more suited to using as kind of like a, a data object or config object where you would hold on to a bunch of data or some behavior that's not specific to like an instance of uh, of a given object, um, kind of like maybe like a static method or something <laughs> uh, that you would see on a mono behavior. And um, specifically, this is for things that like don't need any of the other components, like um, these characters don't actually live somewhere in the game world, so they don't have transforms. Uh, the conversation doesn't live somewhere in the game world, so it doesn't have a transform. Um, they're not, these things aren't really game objects with like subcomponents, they're just um, ways to store some data that you want to be easily configurable. So I'm just going to walk through how I have those set up. So um, each of these characters is uh, is an instance of a scriptable object. And this conversation is an instance of a uh, scriptable object uh, called conversation. And I'm just going to show you, uh, <coughs> I'm going to stop playing this and show you what that looks like here. So um, you'll notice uh, down here in my list of assets, I have this folder here for scriptable objects and here are the definitions for those. So we have one for character and one for conversation. And then up here, uh, you'll see I have um, actual characters I've created from those and an actual conversation I've created from the scriptable objects. And um, one of the thing, things that's cool with this too is um, all of this works within the Unity editor. You don't have to go outside of the editor. Uh, so you don't need to, you know, go out and edit a bunch of JSON files or have some other workflow that's maybe confusing to non-technical people or just less efficient because you have to juggle between tools. Like you can do all of this right here in the editor. So this is great if you have, you know, designers, or level designers or other people you're collaborating with or even for yourself. It's just uh, as a uh, software engineer, you know, it just makes it easy to edit these things quickly. So let's just take a look an example of one of these real quick. So you can see uh, this character has the full name Chun-Li <coughs> and she has a portrait. And that's just a sprite that's pulled over from uh, here. 
in this images folder under assets. Uh, and then uh, same thing for evil Ryu. So a uh, full name and a portrait, which is also just pulled over from an image here. So nothing fancy, uh, a sprite, I should say. And then uh, let's just take a look at the code behind that real quick. So if we hop over here, we can see uh, we have this class called character. <laughs> and instead of inheriting from mono behavior, which is what you see most often in a Unity project, uh, this just inherits from scriptable object. And uh, it's going to have a property for, uh, or sorry, it's going to have a, uh, uh, yeah, uh, some information for the full name and for the uh, portrait, which is the sprite. And that's what we were seeing in the uh, Unity UI in the inspector. And then you'll notice too, there's this line here, which is create asset menu. And um, this default, this is a default file name, which is new character and then a uh, menu name, which is character. And what that's gonna let us do is access um, creating a character through the uh, Unity editor UI. So here now we can go to create and now we have a option here that's character. And you notice there's also one in here for conversation, which we'll look at in a minute. But if we wanted to just quickly try this out, we could throw in a new character and this could be Blanca. And Blanca is gonna have a full name and a place to drop a sprite for the portrait. Um, so yeah, it's just cool. You can make these things really quickly. Uh, makes it really easy. I'm just gonna remove Blanca for now. And then um, similarly for conversation, you can see um, this is an uh, instance of a conversation, but it'll have a speaker on the left, speaker on the right, and then an array of all the different lines, and those lines are for a specific character. So let's pull that up in Unity. And you can see here, um, this one's a little more complicated, but uh, pretty pretty similar. So here we have a conversation class uh, that derives from a scriptable object. And it's got those properties that we just saw in the inspector. Who's the speaker on the left? Who's the speaker on the right? What are their lines? Um, one thing that you'll notice too is we also have this line here so that we get that menu for conversation, which we saw earlier. If you want to, you can um, nest these two. So this could be like playable, or sorry, this is conversations. This could be, um, I don't know, intros or something like that. And if you do that, you'll get a sub menu in the Unity editor. Um, and then up here at the top, um, I originally I tried a couple different approaches for storing the lines. I'd actually made a scriptable object for the line, um, but that didn't play as well with the Unity editor as I was hoping. Um, it basically gave me an array of objects that weren't um, editable in one place. You had to go edit each line individually. So I switched it up uh, and I'm just using a struct now for line. And so each line has a character and text. And there's a couple things here that make this work in the Unity editor. So um, this is telling uh, the editor that this is a serializable uh, object and that'll make it editable within the editor. And then here, uh, this is saying this text should be um, uh, multiple lines, so two lines and then a certain width. But this sets it up so that it's easy to uh, do multi-line text. You don't have to um, you don't have to fake like you don't have to put in new line characters and then come back and, re and replace them after they're escaped. It just lets you edit it as if you have multi-line text. Um, so again, this is all pretty, pretty simple for what you're getting out of it. Um, and then uh, basically I'm going to hop back over to the, to unity here. So you can see um, all we really have to do is, you know, we can take these characters we've built, and on a conversation, we can just drag these into these different places. So we can choose who's on the left, who's on the right. We can um, update who the characters are. Um, we can change the text. So uh, let's just change the text here. Uh, run that and you can just see that that changes really quickly for us. So it just makes it really easy to uh, build these out really fast. Um, it would be really easy to throw in one of these confrontation conversations for any pair of characters and do it all in Unity without jumping out and editing um, JSON or something outside of here uh, without having to get into code that might intimidate people. 
So it just seems like a nice clean way to handle this. Um, and then the, so the other piece of this, which I had mentioned is um, how to build the actual um, dialogue system to display these things. And I'm just gonna walk you through how I have it set up here, uh, but you may need you know, your own custom solution for what you're doing. Uh, but if it is of interest, stick with me here and I'll show you how that works. So the basic idea is uh, we have a UI canvas and within there, um, we have a, a game object that I'm calling dialogue. And it has essentially a controller on it that figures out who's speaking and um, feeds them the, the right lines <coughs> ba uh, based on where we are in the conversation. You can see here that it's holding on to the conversation that we were just looking at. Um, and it's keeping track of um, the, U the, the UI for the speaker on the left and the UI for the speaker on the right. I should probably update the name of that to reflect that uh, a little bit better. But um, here you can see um, we have a speaker left and a speaker right. Um, by default, I have these uh, disabled or inactive, so I'm gonna turn them on just so we can take a look at them. So the UI for the speaker on the left just consists of the, the sprite we wanna display, the name, and then the dialogue. And um, you'll notice over here, there's a speaker UI script and that's gonna just hold on to references to each of uh, the relevant uh, items over here. So the portrait, their full name, and the dialogue, and that'll let us set those programmatically. And then the speaker on the right is just the same thing, um, but on the other side. Now, with a little more time, it's probably, uh, could probably set this up so that we only really need one of these and it shifts around, but this is just kind of an easy way to uh, get started to have one on the left and one on the right. Also, if your game gets more complicated and you have multiple speakers on each side or something like that, um, you may need to, to make it a little bit fancier, but this is just enough to get us going. So I'm gonna hide that again. Um, and then each of these things, each of the game objects underneath each of the speakers just represents one of those uh, elements. So portrait, dialogue text, name text, and then the panels behind each of those things. Um, so, now I'm gonna hop back over to the code for a minute. Um, let me grab my speaker dialogue, or speaker UI, I should say. Um, so this is the script that's gonna handle an individual speaker. So you can see here, um, we just got references for portrait, full name, dialogue. And then um, those are the things we see in the ins inspector. And then this just tracks who's the active speaker. Um, when we set the speaker, we wanna also update the portrait sprite to be the speaker's portrait and the, the text to be the speaker's name. Um, and then uh, down here, we're just doing some other, just really basic stuff like setting the dialogue text based on what's assigned. I have some convenience methods for uh, seeing if this UI has a speaker already if it's the speaker in question, uh, showing and hiding the um, uh, the UI, uh, depending on where we are in the conversation, so we can kind of flip back and forth between characters. And then the dialogue uh, is gonna have, uh, this dialogue display script is just basically a controller for the conversation, and it's not doing a whole lot. It um, has these, uh, attributes here that we were seeing in the inspector, which are which, what's the conversation, who's speaking on the left, who's speaking on the right. Uh, it's also gonna hold on, uh, keep some references here to hold on to the scripts that control those, um, the UI for the speaker on the left and the speaker on the right. And then the active line of um, dialogue that we're at. And so here we're just assigning those things. Uh, we're setting the speakers for, uh, based on the information from the conversation. And then anytime uh, somebody presses the space bar, um, we're gonna advance the conversation. And all that does is it says, hey, if the um, current line that we're interested in is uh, less than the number of lines in the conversation, then go ahead and display it and then move um, the line number forward. So it's just gonna add one to the active line index. And then if, uh, if we've hit the end of the conversation, it's gonna hide the speaker on the left, it's gonna hide the speaker on the right, uh, the UI for those, and then it's gonna reset the um, line to be the first line of the conversation. 
And then when we actually want to display a line, all we have to do is say, hey, look in the lines for the conversation and give us the active one. And then uh, let's find out what the character is <laughs> that's speaking that line. And then um, uh, if that character is a character on the left, we're just going to set their dialogue. And if it's the character on the right, we're going to set their dialogue. And um, we need to show and hide the characters too. So um, this method cares about uh, both speakers, the active speaker and the inactive speaker. And all it's going to do for the active speaker is set its dialogue uh, in the UI <coughs> to be the um, the text of a line. And then it's going to show the active speaker and hide the inactive speaker. So it's just kind of a basic controller that says, hey, wh who's speaking? Um, if this is the person speaking, let's show them and hide the other person. And, um, and then if we've hit the end of the conversation, just shut it down and kind of reset the conversation so nothing too fancy there um so yeah this is kind of a different way that i would approach doing this today uh again this is just my take on it i'm not a uh, like a professional games programmer but this just seems like a much nicer way uh, to build this that makes it easy for whoever wants to edit it to edit it and uh it doesn't take very long to set up this way and it's kind of easy to um easy to make changes. So anyway, if you have uh, questions about this, just leave them in the comments. Um, if you're not subscribed, hit subscribe and the notification bell to uh, uh, be notified about future videos. And um, thanks for watching.